In today's video, I take you along my translation workflow. Coming up. Hello and welcome back to the Freelance Verse. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Today I have a topic that so many of you ask me to ask me about and I'm happy to finally make this video. I'm going to take you through step by step through my translation workflow. Everything from receiving the job to delivering the job I will show you here live on screen. Let's go. As you can probably tell quite a bit of time has passed. Uh, I'm now in Switzerland. Uh, very early rainy Saturday morning so perfect time to film this test job to actually take you along straight off the bat as you can see on the screen I have an email now this is a fake email but uh, I just want to take you along and uh, kind of imitate a, a normal job obviously I can't show you a real job right that would uh, break so many confidential <coughs> confidentiality issues uh, or agreements so I faked this whole uh, situation today but I'm still gonna show you exactly what I would do in real life all right new job request uh, 5th of November freelance verse that is today uh, as you can see it's quite a last minute video I filmed this on Saturday and did you see it already on Monday hi Adrian we have a new job for you we need this short text in English translated into German please find the doc attached there are 182 words here is a live preview for the English version. Deadline is tomorrow, EOB, end of business day, that means. Now, this is a very standard email that I would get from my regular clients that already know me, right? Because there is no negotiation, nothing happening here. So this is something I could get on Monday, any day <clears throat> from the clients that I have that trust me already. They find a job. Now this is about uh, the World Cup, so it's sports related. They probably think, yeah, Adrian, that's a special specialization. English to German is perfect for him, send it to him. And 182 words is a very short job, uh, so deadline tomorrow, end of business day, makes sense, right? Now the first thing I would do when I get this email is I would uh, open the link, the, the reference link, and I would also open the, the document that they send me. So let's do that. Okay, I have the preview, the staging link here. Uh, it's the FIFA website, general text about the World Cup in Qatar, Relatively easy to translate and not a lot of time will be spent on these 180 words. And also the document looks exactly the same, right? It's just copy pasted into Word. That's a very standard procedure that can happen a lot. If someone, if a client doesn't work with a CAD tool, so they will not uh, send you the jobs in a CAD tool if it's a direct client. Uh, it mostly looks like this. You get it in Word and also a staging link. Now I can do this job, right? So the first thing I would do is I confirm to the client that I can do this. So I would write something like this. Hi team, thanks for reaching out. I can take this job and deliver by the requested deadline. And then something you have to almost always ask in German, but also in Spanish, also in French, also in many different languages that are spoken in different continents or, or regions or, or countries. Please let me know if, if this is German for Switzerland or German for Germany is needed. Uh, especially with the World Cup because FIFA is a Swiss organization, right? So they actually, I know that they often want uh, German for Switzerland in their, in their publications. So here I would ask back what they need and then the client would confirm it. Now I'm going to skip the confirming part. I'm just going to say the client re reacts to this email with German for Switzerland. Now next step, I'm going to import document into MemoQ. I'll show you exactly how I do that. All right, this is MemoQ. I'm going to go on new project. Uh, this is in German now, but it doesn't matter. It's very simple. I give it a name. I choose the languages. So now I import the documents to be translated. This is a relatively simple document, so there will not be any problems importing that, right? There are a few images in there, but they don't cause problems because MemoQ just ignores them. You can't edit images in MemoQ. So then I add a translation memory. Uh, I'm going to just create a new one here because this is a fresh batch of MemoQ, but normally I have my my translation memory is here and I would add the sport one, the football one and the specific one for the client. Here I'm just going to create the test one. And now it's imported. Now I have the job here. It actually says 183 words. Okay, interesting. Now if you really want to be picky, you could go back to the client and say actually word is not correct. MemoQ says 183 words. But honestly, it's a few cents and you might make the client mad about that. So I would not actually go back to the client. I would just stick with the 182, but that's up to you. If you want to be uh, exactly correct, you can tell him it's actually one word more. If it's like a hundred words more, then definitely tell them because then you get paid more. All right, now before we start, uh, I want to show you 
my setup in the in the internet, like in the Chrome browser, how I actually with which tools I work with. So let me open the browsers that I usually work with. Uh, I almost always work in Chrome. Uh, that's because some of my clients uh, requested it, and it's so I th I also think it's the best browser with all the extensions you can use. So these are the the tools that I use on a daily basis. These tabs I just have always open. Number one is Google. Just have it have Google open because you will need it when you translate. One good tip is always use the the domain ending uh, of the country that you're translating for. So I have google.ch open because this job is for Switzerland, because then you get actually Swiss results first, right? You can still find the other stuff, but another, uh, the second tool that not many people know about is the two-lingual Google search. Uh, I love this tool. It's just twolingual.com. What this does, you can actually change the languages here. So I would always have English and German, and then you can search anything and you get a, a two lingual, like a, a multiple lingual Google results. So you don't only see the results in English, but you also see the same about the same topic in German. So you can exactly see how it's reported on in the two different languages, right? So if I search for Qatar World Cup, then you see like these are the sponsored ones on top but then when you scroll down you see on the left side you see the whole uh, reporting on it uh, in english as a normal english google result and on the right side you see the german one which is amazing right because now i already know the official name of the tournament right Tulingual, an amazing site i know this from my university and i've used it ever since my favorite bilingual, uh, two-lingual dictionary is Pons, Pons.eu. I use it all the time. Uh, it's just a, an online dictionary, but I think it's it, it's amazing. I don't know why exactly I use this. There are many other ones, but I really love this one. Uh, if you type World Cup, you get the normal translations, just uh, and then you also get the context ones. There's a trophy. There are. Uh, different uh, collocations come with it, examples from the Pons Dictionary, editor editorially verified, so you get whole sentences. I love Pons, I use it every day. Uh, it's definitely a good and reliable uh, dictionary, a two-lingual one. Then the next one is Duden. Duden is kind of the German translators or, or copywriters Bible. Uh, everything, it's just a monolingual dictionary and everything that is in the Duden counts. Like it's a very, very strictly regulated source. Uh, that's where I look up how to write things, uh, what gender something is in German, what's the cases. And for, the, for the English monolingual dictionary, I use the Cambridge Dictionary. Um, that's, I don't use that that much, but I still have it open all the time. These are just the five tabs that open when I open uh, Chrome, because these I use the most. And then I have the source text uh, of, the, of today's job. So now you know the tools, let's get back to the actual document. Go back to MemoQ, I open the file, and now I have the file in my editor, and now I can actually start translating. Now what I would do usually is I usually go through the whole document and I translate the very easy things um, that I know I don't have to look anything up, I just know already what the translation will be because for some reason that gives me kind of a, a good feeling because then I once through the document I know what, what is, lies ahead of me and I've already done a few things and then in the, in the bottom left corner you see 0% so when I'm done with the first the reading of the text it will already say not 0% I will already have kind of a kind of a, a first uh, step done. So for example, now these groups down here, they will be very easy to translate. So I will probably in the first step already go through them. Now, when I look at World Cup Qatar 2022, yeah, that is the official naming of FIFA, right? And I've already seen in my two lingual Google search what the official naming is. Now the FIFA is not in the source, right? It's just World Cup Qatar. So it's just this, the second part, World Cup Qatar 2022. So it's going to be Fußball Weltmeisterschaft Qatar 2022. Now I know already that this will be definitely the word that's used, so I can already copy that, go back into MemoQ, paste that, take the TM out, add a colon, and I already have the first segment done. So I can confirm it with Control Enter, and then it becomes green. Uh, now the second segment is, it's not going to be hard to translate, but it's not something that comes naturally, and I just do it on the go when I first read it, so this I leave open. Share is just a button where people can share the document, which is always Thailand and German, right? So I will already write that in. Uh, FIFA stays, of course, FIFA, so I already write it in. 
So now you know what I mean. Now the first uh, longer sentence, of course, I leave it open in the first uh, go because these will take time to actually translate. Um, but then here, uh, now I get already a match up here on the right, you see, because World Cup Qatar I already translated. So it's the first match. So if I click Control 1, it already adds it. But I also need group, groups, right? So I also need grouping. Now, uh, I can't just add grouping in the end of the thing in German. That doesn't make sense. I will have to somehow probably add, add grouping in the beginning, but I need to think about that. So I leave it unconfirmed. Uh, it's an orange, 77%. I go on. So I will know I have to do something there, right? Whereas group A, I, I know it will be group A, so I can already uh, control enter that and confirm it. The countries are very easy to translate. So in a first, uh, some of them are. Now I just see that I are Iran or Iran. I actually don't know how this will be. I think that's Islamic Republic of Iran, right? I actually don't know how this will be in German. So this kind of shows me that I probably have to take up a take look up a list of the actual namings, the official namings of the countries in German which now makes me think I don't go just through it on a casual thing, I, I will actually look it up. But this one I know already. Uh, now there are tags in the source and uh, you need to always use these tags also in the target, right? These blue things, they, they make the, it's probably a fat, like a bold marker so that the group B is bold and I don't know why group A doesn't have it. So what I do uh, when there are tags in the source, I would always this means copy the source text, so I would always click that so the tags come with it. And then I just add group a bit, control, and now probably I get the match. Yes, now you see when I'm in group C, I see on the top right I get a match, 85%, because the only thing I need to change, if I do now control 1 to take this match, the only thing I need to change is B to C. That's all. That's why it's an 85% match. And then the same here. Control one, etc. So I do that now, and then I go back up and I actually start translating, right? Uh, teams, groups, fixtures, stadiums, tickets, and more. Uh, I would leave the structure relatively, yeah, actually probably exactly the same, the structure, uh, but then I will go to the FIFA website and see how they translate teams. Uh, groups, I already know it's group, Gruppen, but fixtures can be many different translations in German. So I will go again to the FIFA website to find a, a, a connection to see how they translate it. Stadiums is, is probably Stadien, tickets is probably tickets. I would now do a lot of research on the mainly on the FIFA site, uh, also on other websites online with my two lingual uh, Google search, as I said, and I will translate this and get back to you when I'm done. All right, the translation is done and something relatively interesting came up uh, that I could have foreseen, but it also, it's good that it came up because it can definitely happen in real life as well. Uh, I found some of these segments, quite a lot actually, definitely also with the groups. I found them on the German FIFA website already. They were already translated. Now, if that happens, definitely just take the already translated one because that's uh, usually um, already reviewed and it's live. So you can definitely use that for the groups. I, I just use the words. But something interesting was that this segment I found, this whole segment, here's everything you need to know about Qatar 2022 with full details on the teams, groups, complete fixture list, standings, how to buy tickets and more, was translated with it, this very short sentence. This just means here you find everything you need to know about, about Qatar. It makes sense that this is shortened because all the other rest that they say is already set up here, right? So they just shortened it. Now, you can use that because, and probably should use that because it's already reviewed, but here I would ask the client back if it's okay to use the already reviewed version because you leave out a lot in the source, right? It makes sense to leave it out. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but here I would be hesitant to just do this, do this and not say anything. I would probably go back to the client and say, hey, look, segment nine, I've already seen that uh, on your website. It's been shortened. It makes sense to shorten it. Is it okay if I do that as well? and they would most likely confirm it. Uh, so I'm going to skip this step, but let's let's just assume that they confirm this for me. Uh, so now the next step is you have to do the QA checks and the spell checks in MemoQ. I show you how this is done. You go to review here, you prove it's called in German, and then you have 
Here the thumbs up thing is called uh, quality assurance. So you just run this quality test. I don't know if anything, ah yeah, a couple of things come up, for example, but most of these things are always irrelevant, but you still have to go through them relatively quickly. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting one. Look, uh, there are several uh, trailing spaces after Tunisia, which shouldn't be, right? So this is actually an, a relevant uh, error. So here I would just delete the trailing, the trailing spaces after Tunisia because that's not needed which then means that this segment goes back to orange, so it's not confirmed yet. So the ones that are needed, I, I already changed. But now that means that one segment will not be confirmed anymore, this down here with Tunisia, so I have to go back to it and confirm it again. Now, next up is exporting, right? Because the client didn't send me this file in MemoQ, so I'm not gonna send him a MemoQ file back, that makes no sense. I need to send him the same file back that he sends me or she sends me. If they send me a MemoQ package, I send a MemoQ package back. They send me a Word file, so I have to send a finished, uh, completed Word file back. So they don't want to have anything to do with, with the CAD tools if it's a direct client. So what I do next is exporting. I go back to the project central, I go on the job and I click export up here. And, it, and I get a nice uh, German exported file of the document, right? <clears throat> now next what you have to do is you have to check it for spelling mistakes. So you do a normal spell check in Word. Make sure you have the correct uh, German for Switzerland, the correct language here, right? Um, looks good actually, I don't think it found anything. Okay, it says 100% so they didn't find anything, which is good. I didn't expect them to find anything. But now what I still do is I go through the document, I just check how the formatting looks. Protected spaces after the sentence, they're not needed. After group, I always take the space out here as well. Okay, interesting. Word says Saudi Arabian is spelled with a hyphen, but on the FIFA website it was spelled without hyphen. Uh, definitely trust your source uh, material there. Uh, FIFA probably writes it for a reason without hyphen, right? Let me just check what, the, for example, the, the foreign affairs of Switzerland say. So this is the official uh, department for foreign affairs in Switzerland and they do write it with a hyphen. So this is the official naming. I would still leave it uh, without hyphen like they do on their website, but I would leave a comment when I'm delivering this uh, so the client knows. Same goes for the graphic. So the graphic I can't uh, edit, right? So all these names are now still in English. So I would also, when I deliver it, write a comment about the graphic. Now the last thing I do in the document I make sure to anonymize it because I don't want, where the client usually doesn't want your name to be in there, right? Especially when it's an agency. I just have the habit of doing this all the time, whatever I deliver. It just makes the, the document clean and I really like it. So you go on file, information, you, you uh, check the file because now you see I'm the author and I'm also the reviewer, both of my names. And I don't want that. So I check the file, <coughs> check it. And I delete, here is the only thing that is an exclamation mark, so I delete all the person-related information. Now the last thing to do is to deliver the job. I am looking for the original email that they sent me, so if you have a lot of uh, discussion with them, I always go back to the original one that's here, and then I write a short message. All right, I have the message written. Hi team, please find the finished translation of this job attached. Always make sure you have a file attached when you type the word attached. Uh, then I wrote note, uh, Saudi Arabian is the translation for Saudi Arabia on the FIFA website. However, the ED EDA the, of Switzerland writes it with a hyphen, please check. Also, the graphics are not editable. Please let me know whether you also need them translated. Thank you for confirming safe receipt. I always write that so I know that they actually received the translation from me. And that is basically all. Then you send it. I always, when I do delivery, I, I change the, the subject line and I write in capitals delivery and I put an important marker on it. That's just a habit I have when I do a delivery. And then I send it out and you are done. There you go, this is the entire workflow of a translation. As you can see, it's a very small job, but it still takes a lot of time, right? That is why you don't only look at small jobs and you think, oh, I, I should just charge a little bit because it's a small job, right? You're paid for all around it, for the whole ecosystem that you can provide, for the whole research that you can do. Um, I hope this sheds a light into the 
the secrets of translation, what is behind it, how much work it actually is. So imagine if this was a big job with like 5,000 words, right? What, what comes with it? I hope you enjoyed this video. This was heavily requested. Make sure to let me know in the comments uh, if this helps you, uh, what you would like to see next. And I see you next Monday with, I think, a vlog from the Translating Europe Forum if I manage to get it done. <laughs> see you then.